Hello and welcome to class 32. Today we're going to be covering summer sports. Oh, uh, boxing. Uh, it's a combat sport using protective gloves. It's always done professionally in a ring and closed fists are only allowed to be used. So like nothing like an open fist is not allowed. So is the backhand nor the wrist. Oh yeah, and there's the picture. Uh, I did baseball. Baseball, it's going to be played at the Tokyo Summer Olympics after not being included in the Summer Olympics for about 13 years. Um, baseball is still being played during the summer. Um, the league is called the Major League Baseball in the U.S. Um, baseball starts during the spring, which is called the spring training. It ends during the fall when the World Series ends. Um, baseball is also played glo globally. One famous um, USA player is Ichiro Suzuki. He played for the Seattle Mariners. He retired, but he also played in Japan. And at the bottom, we have a picture. Um, there's the pitcher's mound. And in front of, well, there's like the batting, this batter's box is a right-handed, one for right-handers and the left-hand one for left-handers. There's also a catcher's box. There's also three bases. There's technically four bases, but there's the first base, second base, third base, and the home plate. And if you touch home plate, um, you'll score a run. The positions are left field, center field, right field. There's second base, shortstop, third base. First base, there's the pitcher and also the catcher. And there's also um, a first base coach and also a third base coach. Uh, I'm Joshua Way and I'll be presenting Ultimate Frisbee. And this sport has multiple rule sets. So the one I'll be presenting is only one of them. And Ultimate Frisbee is a fast moving non-contact sport played by two six person teams. And the goal of this game is to get a Frisbee from one side to another, which is similar to football. And the game starts off with a throw off decided by coin toss. And whoever wins the coin toss um, starts to throw off. Sorry. And then players then throw the Frisbee to each other to try and get to the end zone. After catching a Frisbee, one can only take about three steps before having to stop and throw to another team. And a few popular club ultimate Frisbee players are Dylan Freechild, Kurt Gibson, Jimmy Mickle, and Jack Williams. And on the top right, there's a picture of an ultimate Frisbee Frisbee. And on the bottom right, there is a game, there's a picture of a game. So next up is soccer. Um, a bit of how to play. It's, it's a 90 minute game split into two four or five minute halves with a 10 minute halftime where players are allowed to rest. Um, during the game, obviously there's no hands allowed except the goalie. And during throw-ins, and what throw-ins are is when the ball is out of play it crosses the boundary lines of the whole field and the field players like defenders um, or offenders are allowed to throw the ball in over the heads. Um, fouls are awarded when one player breaks the rules. Like if a player uh, pushes their opponent too hard or decides to bite another player, they're awarded free kicks or um, the, a reasonable, uh, I guess, uh, penalty. Um, so some common lineups are, um, first of all, 4-3-3. This is probably the most um, seen and recognized uh, lineup or formation. Um, so starting from the bottom of the picture, there's one goalie, four defenders, three midfielders, um, and two wingers. Um, so, so, um, so some pros of the 4-3-3 formation is that it has great offensive plays. Um, the three midfielders in the middle row created like a sort of triangle. Um, they get form a triangle from that one lineup and that creates a lot of opportunities, um, in the game. Um, and the three strikers, the two midfielders and one striker up top, um, they have the ability to overwhelm the opponents in the, uh, uh their box, which is the little box near goalie, uh, near their goalie, um, which makes it an easier time scoring. Um, but some cons is that uh, if the midfielders are beat, as you can see in the orange box, 
um, the defender, the defense, the defensive line have a hard time recovering since they don't have the proper support from their midfielders. Um, and it also requires lots of stamina since the outside backs, um, the, the defensive players on the outside, um, they have to recover a lot of space when the offensive and midfielders, midfield players are um, pushed up into the opponent's space. Um, so they have to a large area to cover and need to run more. Uh, so, yeah. Skateboarding was born in the late 1940s. It is the act of riding and performing tricks on the skateboard. Skateboarding, along with surfing, was going to be introduced as an Olympic sport in the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. However, the 2020 Olympics was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. There are also many different types of skateboards, which each specializes in different things. Uh, these types of skateboards include longboards, cruisers, penny boards, and cowboys. boards. Okay, so I did golf. Golf is an, an individual sport played by hitting a ball with a club from a tee into a hole. The object is to get the ball into the hole with the least number of swings or strokes of the club. The modern, some facts about golf is that it was created at the old course at St. Andrews in 1764. Um, the first round of women's golf was played in 1811, and, uh, and in 1867, the first women's club was developed. Golf balls were originally made of feathers and leather, so manufacturers would wet the feathers and wrap them around the leather. This helped the feathers dry around the leather, and this was also a time-consuming process and, as you can imagine, didn't create the most reliable golf ball. So I'll be presenting indoor volleyball, and it is a team sport in which two teams of six players are separated by a net, and the objective of the game for each team is to make the ball touch the ground on the opponent's side. It was developed by William G. Morgan, who is a physical education director, and he invented Mintonet, which later developed and became volleyball. Well, some basic rules of indoor volleyball are that each team is allowed three hits to get the ball over the net to the opposing team's side. And the three basic hits are a pass, a set, and a spike. Passes and sets are used to pass the ball to another teammate where a spike is used to get. And the ball can be played with any part of a player's body, but it cannot be held, thrown, or pushed. And for each rally, the serving player must stay behind the back line and use an underhand or overhand approach to hit the ball over the net and in bounce on the opposing team's side. And touching any part of the net with anything besides the ball or player's hair is a violation that results in the opposing team receiving a point. And lastly, a ball that lands out of bounds results in a point for the team that did not touch the last. Uh, my topic was Tai Chi. Um, tai Chi, um, it is a Chinese traditional kind of sport or something like that. And it is not a sport that you can do anytime and mostly practiced by elderly in China. This sport can not only be practiced in the summer, but it can be practiced anytime. And it doesn't, it doesn't take like there, there's no specific time you need to do it. And then the, this uh, Tai Chi is usually used to keep you uh, in good shape and health. Um, I'm gonna be doing surfing. So what exactly is surfing? Surfing is a summer sport where people um, ride the waves waves the goal of the sport is um, to ride and progress on the unbroken part of the waves using a surfboard and surfers will stand on their boards and navigate the water and be nearly parallel to the beach or towards the shore. So how does surfing work? 
Surfing uses a surfboard, which is a board that is big in size that surfers will stand on. There are four different types of surfing waves, the spilling wave, the plunging wave, the surging waves, and the collapse, collapsing wave. Um, here's a little bit of history. The sport of surfing began between the 19th and 20th centuries, but wave riding has been done for a long period of time. The first evidence of surfing was from around 1899, um, um, but it is said that surfing has been dated back as far as to back as the 2000, as 2000 BC. And then an 18th century sea captain and ocean explorer once wrote about surfing in um, his like journal. I'm Sabrina. I'll talk about water polo today. Um, it is a competitive team sport played in water between two teams of seven players each. The game consists of four quarters in which the two teams attempt to score goals by throwing the ball into the opposing team's goal. The team with the most goals at the end of the game wins the match. Each team is made up of six field players and one goalkeeper. A water polo match is divided into four quarters of eight minutes. Each team is only allowed to hold onto the ball for a maximum of 30 seconds before shooting for a goal. The history of water polo as a team sport began in mid 19th century England and Scotland where water sports were a feature of county fairs and festivals. Water polo has been included in every summer Olympic games as a men's competition, competition sport, except 1896. Women's water polo made its debut in the Summer Olympics in 2000. The rules of water polo were originally developed in the mid 19th century by um, Ingridon in Great Britain by William Wilson. All right, next up, we'll be presenting spike ball. Spike ball is a combination of volleyball and four square and can be very competitive and challenging. And it's often played during the summer at beaches. So spike ball is played with two teams of two, a yellow ball and a black and yellow round net that looks like a small trampoline. Each team is allowed three touches before they have to hit the ball down into the net. Then the next team gets to hit up to three times and so forth. If you mess up and don't hit it back into the net, the other team gets the point. Spike ball is played to 21 points and your team has to win by two. Hi, I'm Jerry Z and I'll be presenting American football. So the profile, the name is football, and it was started since um, the first evidence was November 6th, um, 1869, and its origin was from soccer and rugby. Popularity that was severely throughout the world, especially in North America. Next page, please. So one of the major competition, I guess everybody in America has heard of the Super Bowl. It's happening annually on the first Sunday of February, serving as the championship game for each NFL season. Um, NFL stands for um, National Football League, attended by 0 .5, about 0 0.5 million football in Cortesio, the Atlanta Super Bowl in 2019, I believe. This is um, five newly added rules for 2021. Um, from the NFL. It's the first one is to eliminate overtime in the preseason. Preseason um, establishes maximum number of players in the setup zone during a free kick. Replay um, officials can now provide certain object, objective information to on field officials, ensure the enforcement of all penalties committed by each, either team on extra point, two point um, convers conversion attempts, and allows off down to the penalty of a second and four pass. And there's also a six one that is not really a row, it's um, the jersey oh. number changes. Baseball. It, baseball is a very popular American sport. 
It's a bat and ball game played between two opposing teams who take turns batting and fielding. The game is played by a pitcher who throws the ball and a batter who hits it. The batter then runs to three total bases and scores a point when they return back to where they began. There are also uh, other players in the court who try to get the ball and then bring it back to the bases. The goal is to try to score as many points as possible. History. Um, baseball evolved from an older game in England in the 18th century, and it was brought by immigrants to the U.S. By the late 19th century, baseball was widely recognized as the national sport of the United States. Uh, I'm going to talk about basketball. So to win, a to win a game of basketball, you have to score more points than the other team. Usually teams are composed of five players and points can be scored by shooting a basketball into the net. So next is the history of basketball. So basketball was invented in 1891 by James Naismith and the game quickly rose in popularity. And in 1946, the NBA was established. So in the NBA, there are 30 different teams in the United States and there's players from all over the world and they compete for the NBA championship. And this year, the Milwaukee Bucks and the Phoenix Suns are competing for the NBA championship. Hello, I'm Nicole um, and I'll be introducing the sport of artistic swimming. Um, so first, what it is. Artistic swimming is a hybrid form of swimming, dance, and gymnastics. It consists of swimmers performing a synchronized routine of elaborate moves in the water, and this is all accompanied by music. So traditional routines are between two and four minutes. Um, events in artistic swimming include a solo event that's pictured um, in the top right corner, a duet, which is pictured in the bottom left, um, a mixed duet, which is a female and a male duet, a free team, which is portrayed in the bottom right and a free combination, um, which is a 10 member routine. So this is a really difficult and challenging sport demanding advanced water skills, great strength, endurance, flexibility, artistry, precision, exceptional breath control, etc. So um, athletes train their entire lives just to go to the Olympics. And even then, um, you know, a lot of athletes, a lot of really amazing athletes still don't get the opportunity to do so. Um, so competitions, um, swimmers perform two routines for a panel of judges. So this will be a technical routine and a free routine. Um, traditionally, a tech routine is shorter than a free routine, ranging from uh, two to three minutes, and a free routine ranges from two to five, from four to five minutes. Um, a tech routine, the differentiation is that for a competition, there is a predetermined set of elements. So elements are just kind of motions that um, a the athlete or a team of athletes um, will perform. And because it's in a routine and you're performing the same kind of motions, um, then it's easier to judge the technical elements of it without including the artistry. While in the free routine, um, there is more emphasis on artistry and just emphasizing the beauty of the human body and the sport. So artistic swimming has been part of the Summer Olympics program since 1984. It is part of the Tokyo 2021 Olympic program as well. And unfortunately, the United States just missed the cutoff for participating in the event. But other um, really amazing teams in Russia, China, and uh, France are competing. And it's going to be a really tough battle for the, for the podium. Um, and the sport is predominantly a women's sport. But more mixed events have been included since 2015, and this year for the first time the U.S. national team included a male athlete, which um, was really groundbreaking and incredibly inspirational. So for some fun facts, although artistic swimming um, is definitely an athletic sport, it's also a really good money maker. So in Las Vegas, there is a show called Cirque de Soli, and then um, it includes a synchronized swimming show. It's portrayed in the bottom left, and it sells thousands of tickets every year. 
And as I said in the beginning, athletes start really young, as young as three years old. Um, in the picture of the bottom right, that's actually my team competing at Junior Olympics this year. I'm an artistic swimmer myself. And um, yeah, so if you ever are interested, um, it is a really fun sport and it's never too late to start. Badminton. Objective of the game. The objective of badminton is to hit the shutter cock over the net and have it land in the designated court areas. If your opponent manages to return the shutter cock and then a rally occurs. If you win this rally, which is to force your opponent to hit the shutter cock out or into the net, then you win a point. You are required to win 21 points to win a set with most matches being best of three sets. Points can be won on either serve. There are two forms of Batman, singles and doubles. It is also possible to play mixed doubles. Each player is allowed to use a string racket, similar to a tennis racket, but with the head being small and a shot A point is scored when you successfully hit a shot cock over the, over the net and lands it in your opponent's court before they hit it. A point can also be gained when your opponent hit the shot cock into either the net or outside the parameters. Diving. So diving is a sport of jumping or falling into the water from a platform or springboard, usually while performing acrobatics. It's an internationally recognized sport. It's part of the Olympics and it originated in Europe in the 19th century. Divers must have strength, flexibility, kinesthetic judgment and air awareness. So some more facts on diving. There are four distinct body positions pictured in the image. So A corresponds to straight, B is pike, C is tuck, and D is free. There are also many different types of dives. There's a forward, backward, reverse, inward, twisting, and arm stand. And all competitive diving is from springboards set at one meter or three meters above the surface of the water, or from platforms set at five meters, 7.5 meters, and 10 meters. Track. Track is a sport where athletes run against each other and compete to get first place. Track is one of the oldest sports in the world, being around since the Olympic Games of ancient Greece. There are many different track events like sprints, middle distance, long distance, and relay races. Track events. Sprints consist of the 100 meter, 200 meter, and 400 meter races. Middle distance is considered the 800 meter, 1500 meter, and the mile run, while long distance is the 3000 meter, 5000 meter, and 10,000 meter races. A relay race is different. It's a race where teams made up of four compete against each other, and runners run a certain distance carrying a baton before passing it to their teammate, who will then run, and this distance is called a leg. Uh, I will be presenting kayaking, how to kayak. So before kayaking, you have to check the weather, uh, get a paddle size depending on your height, uh, get swimming gear and a vest. While hiking, make sure the paddle blades are in line with each other and make sure the longer edge are, of the paddle is facing up. three phases of paddling the catch phase uh, which is only paddling on one side of the feet and the power phase which is rotating your torso when the blade or the paddle moves behind your kayak focus on pushing against the shaft what with the upper hand as you move the third phase is the release phase, when your hand is right behind your hip, slice or take off the paddle out of the water.
Hi, I'll be presenting um, deep water soloing. Um, so deep water soloing is a form of solo rock climbing that relies solely upon the presence of water at the base of a climb. So um, like uh, it's very, very similar to rock climbing, but um, basically you just have uh, uh, different forms of water underneath you to catch you when you fall. Um, the main uh, event of the year is called the Tuck Fest and you can win up to $15,000 in cash for the winner with participants from all over the world. I'll be presenting tennis. Tennis is played by using a racket to hit a ball over or around the net and into the opponent's side of the court. The goal of the game is to hit the ball so that the opponent will not be able to hit the ball back. By doing so, a player will gain a point. Tennis can be played against one opponent known as singles or with two teams of two players known as doubles. A game of tennis is won when a player wins at least four points in total and at least two points more than their opponent. A score of zero is called love, one is called 15, two is called 30, and three is called 40. Tennis is believed to have originated from the 12th century in France when the ball was hit with the palm of the hand. Tennis appeared in the Olympics in 1896, was dropped out of the program in 1924, and returned to the Olympics in 1988. Swimming. Um, what is sw swimming is the proposition of the body through water combined movements of the arms and legs. Swimming have been proved to have existed as early as 2500 BCE in Egypt. Men in ancient Roman Greece were also required to take swimming in their elementary education. Types of strokes are the breaststroke, side stroke, butterfly stroke, backstroke, cross stroke, and freestyle. Um, races for the freestyle include the 50, 100, 200, 400, 800, and 1500 meter races. Backstroke, butterfly, and breaststroke races include the 200 and 400 meter races. Um, that's the freestyle stroke and that's the breaststroke. Hi, I'm going to be presenting rock climbing. Uh, I don't know why, but it's not fully loaded on my screen. I already have been everything finished, but it's not like full for some reason. Okay, uh, rock climbing is a physical activity and a type of sport where someone would climb up or down, left or right across the surface of rocks. Um, its purpose is to reach a certain endpoint without falling. The important equipment are climbing ropes, helmets and shoes, a belay device, a harness, and climbing cams. There are many different types of rock climbing. There are indoor and outdoor climbing, top roping, sport climbing, bouldering, traditional and free climbing. And for its history, it was discovered around the 1800s in Europe. Uh, in the past, climbing ropes were made of twisted fibers. Uh, street hockey. Street hockey is a uh, more accessible version of um, ice hockey and it's played on the street. It was first invented in 1760 in England by John Joseph Merlin. Uh, the rules are that there are two teams and there's an equal number of players. The, each team is distinguished by color of clothing and a point is given when the Puck. Oh, wait, it didn't load, but it says when the puck goes into the goal, and then, um, yeah. So I'll be presenting disc golf. So modern day disc golf was invented in 1975 by Ed Hedrick. The goal of the game is to throw discs into, into baskets with the least amount of throws. And disc golf courses usually have nine or eight holes or baskets. And the first disc thrown at every hole has to be from the tee, which is an, just an area of the pad. 
And after the first throw, players have to keep on throwing from where their previous throw landed until they make it into the basket. And there are three different types of this, the driver, the mid-range, and the putter. Cycling. So what is cycling? Cycling, or also known as bikes, bicycling, or just biking, is the use of bicycles for transport, recreation, exercise, or for sport. In this case, we're going to be focusing on the sport aspect of cycling. People uh, who do do cycling are known as cyclists, bicyclists, bicyclists or bikers. And so when, when you are um, doing the cycling sport or just uh, bicycling or biking in general, it doesn't always have to be on the classic leg, like foot pedal, two wheeled bike. Sometimes it could also include unicycles, tricycles, quad cycles, um, and also human power vehicles. So for example, motorcycles. Uh, many, and there are many other types of vehicles of which count under the uh, category of cycling. And to go with that, there are also many other, uh, many other, uh, how should I put it, many other categories of which people do race under in the cycling sport. Next slide, please. So talking a bit about cycling's history and some of its racing history, um, some of the most early races in cycling um, were with what were called bone shaker style bikes. And these sort of races were like plagued with injuries. If you wanna know what is a bone shaker style bike, you can look to the leftmost image on the slide. That image is the image of a bone shaker style bike. And these bikes um, were distinctive with their small back wheel, but with a huge uh, front wheel. Um, and these bikes were extremely dangerous because to ride upon, that's because they were very prone to falling because the speeds of which they got up to was very slow. And that meant that the amount of uh, force of which was required to knock the bike over was a lot less than, for example, uh, some of the modern bikes. Because modern bikes today, since they go faster, it's harder for them to really like get pushed over as easily, if I were to put it that way while these sort of bikes went slower and were much easier to push over. Uh, the larger, large races of uh, bicycling or cycling uh, became popular during the, 19, uh, the 1890s. This was known as quote unquote, the golden age of cycling. And there were events that spanned across Europe, the US and even Japan. These uh, events mainly included track cycling and track cycle, uh, this also mainly, you can see track cycling even in modern day uh, races. And these tracks would span across cities and other such areas, while there were also uh, indoor cycling. As you can see in the image in the top right, you can see an example of indoor cycling with um, a large track within a, uh, yeah, within a stadium. These uh, sort of cycling competitions were very common back in the 1890s and were extremely popular back then. However, as of recent years, cycling has fallen off in some areas. And going back to the 1890s, the US um, was, the bicycling or cycling was so popular within the US, there were velo, uh, velodromes um, or, one velodrome or two velodromes for every single uh, city, major city. And each of these were used for uh, track racing events. However, as I've already mentioned, since the mid, the middle of actually the 20th century, the popularity of cycling has very, uh, very much dropped off and has come become a minor sport within the US. However, it still maintains its popularity within areas such as Central Europe, and it continues to be a major sport there. For example, one of the most famous uh, cycling races ever, uh, which is also technically still going on today, is called the Tour de France. Um, and this cycling race spans across uh, a long, long, long track, which goes through many different areas, including mountainous areas. 
and these sort of cycling competitions, uh, these the Tour de France actually began in 1903 and continues to capture large audiences um, even today in the sporting world. Now, I'm going to also touch on a bit of how cycling racing basically works. Uh, there's uh, singular cycling. So basically that's mainly just a single person cycling through a race. However, what's also more interesting is actually team cycling. In team cycling, there's actually multiple players on the team. However, there will usually be like two specific categories, if I were to say it. There would be A, the team leader, and then B, the supporters, if I were to call them that. The team leader is the person who is primarily supposed to be uh, racing. Their job is basically to uh, race as fast as they can and basically make sure that they can get to the end of the course first. The other people on the team, their job is to support the team leader, aka bring him uh, any food or water of which he may need, um, bike in front of them or cycle in front of them to uh, make sure that the team leader gets caught in their uh, slipstream, I believe, and basically has less air resistance and multiple other things, such as possibly even uh, giving their own bikes to the team leader if his happens to break down for any reason. So these uh, sort of team cycling sports revolves around the team leader basically uh, biking to the end while the supporters on his team, basically their job is to um, basically help him get there. Um, and Cycling, especially as a sport, is a very intensive and endurance intensive sport. So many people, uh, many people in this sport have to be both physically, uh, must have physical and mental endurance because in the cycling sport, the mental endurance of what you have to have is being by yourself while doing some of the bigger tracks. So for example, if you're going into a mountainous area, you have to be physically uh, physically uh, prepared to be able to go up into that mountainous area. And you have to be mentally prepared to do it probably by yourself. And when you're by yourself uh, tired, when you're by yourself, you're tired, you are getting exhausted from climbing these steep uphill areas and you are basically by yourself. This is an extremely mentally grueling task because of just how, how should I put it, just how like very alone and very, how should, very isolated you are from the rest of society. That in those scenarios, the team members are also supposed to help the team leader make sure he doesn't um, feel like as lonely and he is able to push through it and make sure he gets to the goal. So that is it for cycling. Thank you for listening to me. Next slide. Uh, my name is Zoe Zong and I'll be presenting handball. Uh, what you do in uh, handball is that each team has to shoot, dribble, and pass the ball in order to score goals over the, uh, the opposing team. Uh, there are multiple variations of handball. Uh, handball is traditionally played indoors, but there have been variations such as field handball and beach handball uh, that have been played outdoors. Its history uh, is that um, it, its origins can be traced back to medieval times, but it was in the 19, 1906 that the rules of modern handball were first established in Denmark. Uh, this game is hugely po popular in Northern and Eastern Europe, uh, but it's still played around the world. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, rules to follow a match uh, consists of two periods of 30 minutes each. Um, each team has seven players and also seven substitutes in case any of the players are unable to play and a goal keeper as well as six outfield uh, players. Outfield players can touch the ball with any part of their body that is, close, uh, that is above the knee. And uh, once a, a player uh, receives 
possession of the bomb, they can cast, hold, hold the possession, or um, shoot. If a player holds possession or the ball, they can dribble or take three steps for um, up to three seconds without dribbling. And uh, only the goalkeeper is allowed to come in contact with the floor of the goal area. Goalkeepers are allowed out of the goal area, but must retain position if uh, they are outside of the goal area. Um, how it works. The, stand, the standard uh, handball game features seven players on each side. Uh, like we mentioned previously, six outfield players and one goalkeeper. And uh, again, they have to have seven substitutes in case uh, any of the players cannot play. And uh, there's a semicircle area where um, around each goal area where um, sometimes referred to as the crease or the zone. And uh, there is also a dashed semicircle line which lies nine meters um, from the goal, which is the free throw line. Uh, the ball must be made from leather or synthetic material, and it must be of a size to fit in the hand of a player. Uh, this means that there are three regulation sizes of handball, one for over eight seconds, where, um, uh, sorry, um, where the ball has a circumference of uh, 50 to 52 centimeters for, um, a uh, 11, sorry, what? Um, never mind, that was a cipher for women and male aged uh, 12 to 16, where the ball has a circumference of 54 to 56 centimeters, and three for males aged um, 16 and over, with a circumference of 58 to uh, 60 centimeters. A handball game can be played with a Court, two goals and a ball. Official games will see teams uh, where they're where the players are in uniform. Uh, how you uh, win uh, to win in a handball game, you must score more than your opponent or the opposing team. If the handball game is drawn, then there must be a winner. Uh, then periods of overtime with a maximum of two to five minutes, five minute periods are played. And uh, if the scores are still level, then a shoot shootout is used to determine the result of the game. And that's it. Um, hi everyone, I'm Eric and I'm gonna be talking about table tennis today. So what is table tennis? Um, also known as ping pong, table tennis is a sport where two to four players hit a small ball over a net across a table using small rackets. In the case of four players, also known as doubles, players on each team must alternate hitting the ball. And um, table tennis is essentially tennis, but played on a small table rather than a court. And this makes it um, a lot easier to play casually with friends as instead of have, needing space for a large tennis court, you can just bring out a small ping pong table. So it's great for casual settings. Um, to get a point, um, you must hit the ball over the net so that it bounces on the other side and it is not hit back to your side. Teams alternate serving the ball after, after a point has been scored and first to 11 points wins. Um, a side must... Uh, must win by two or more points. And a match is typically a best out of five games. Next slide, please. And here's some history about table tennis. Um, it originated in the early 20th century in England. And back then it was originally called ping pong. However, the name table tennis was um, ado adopted in 2020, 1921 to 1922. The first, world, the first table tennis world championships were held in London in 1926, and the sport was primarily dominated by Europeans before Asians emerged in the sport um, in the 1950s, and today it is an Olympic sport. 
Hey, I am also Eric, Eric Hai, and I will be doing softball. So softball is similar to baseball, but, it ha uh, but it's played with a larger ball and a smaller playing field. The game moves faster than baseball due to this. It was invented as an indoor game in 1887 in Chicago, Illinois, in the United States. So there are two types of softball. There's slow pitch and fast pitch. Slow pitch softball is the most common type with an 11 inch diameter ball for women's softball and a 12 inch ball for men's. There are 10 players on the field at once for slow pitch. And for a fast pitch, it's pretty much the same, but it only has nine players. So I'm going to be presenting canoeing. Canoeing is a sport that is normally played in the summer. The sport involves paddling on a canoe with a single bladed paddle. There are two forms of canoeing, canoe camping and canoe racing. Canoe camping is a combination of canoeing and camping. It is similar to the activity backpacking while canoe racing, also known as canoe sprinting, is a combination of canoeing and racing on calm water, and it is similar to kayaking. Netball. What is netball? Netball is a ball sport played by two teams of seven players. Netball is most popular in many Commonwealth nations, and according to INF, netball is played by more than 20 million people in more than 80 countries. Netball derived from early versions of basketball and began in England in the 1890s. Netball is played on a rectangular court with raised goal rings at the end. Each team attempts to score goals by passing a ball down the court and shooting it through the ring. Players are assigned to specific positions which define their roles within the team and restrict movement to certain areas during the court. Players can also only hold the ball for three seconds before shooting for a goal or passing to another player. Uh, I'm Gavin and I did rugby. Uh, there are two teams in rugby. Each team has 15 players. The teams can carry, pass, or kick the ball to the end zone. The team with the most points at the end wins. The game lasts 90 minutes with one half time. The game starts with a kickoff from the center of the field. Then the team with the ball tries to touch the ground at the opponent's in goal to score points. Rugby was invented in 1823 uh, in Warwickshire, England. Uh, it was invented by chance when William Webb Ellis ran off the, with the ball during a football game. Uh, rugby balls used to be made out of pig's bladder. Uh, rugby World Cups tournaments are held every four years. There have been nine Rugby World Cups since the first one in 1897, 1987 in New Zealand. The same whistle is used for every Rugby World Cup tournament. Oh, uh, could you refresh? Uh, I redid it. Uh, hello, I'm, my name is Daniel Guo and I will be discussing cricket. Uh, general information. Cricket is a bat-to-bat -bat game played with two teams of 11 players on the field. It requires a wicked protective clothing, including helmets and pads, and a ball. It trains good hand-eye coordination and the ability to concentrate uh, over long periods of time. History. The earliest reference to cricket is in Southeast England in the mid 16th uh, uh, century, where it originated as a child's game. The first international matches in the uh, second half of the 19th century. Rules. The battling side uh, scores runs by striking the ball bowled at the wicket with the bat. Uh, the bowling in the fielding side tries preventing that by preventing the ball from leaving the field and getting the ball to either wicket. The fielding team will have a bowler bowl the ball uh, to the batsman. Games include at least one innings where each team will take turns in the fielding and uh, 
building Flash, Boldening, and Batting. The building team must get 10 Batman out before they can change over and start battling. The aim is to score as many runs as possible before the building team takes 10 wickets where the team with the most runs wins.